Hello and welcome to this lesson using the if-else clause in the Alice programming tool. Using an if-else is actually pretty easy, but sometimes it's easy to get confused by the logic involved in them. So what do they do? Well, you would use them exactly how you would use them in a sentence. If John is at home, ask him if we can borrow some sugar, else just go to the store and buy some. That's it. You do a test to see if something happens. If it does, then do a certain action. If it doesn't, then do a different one. It's easy. Let's get straight into some code to try it out. In this scene, we have a man and a lady. She will walk by him, and if she is a certain distance from him, he will turn and say hello. Let's start with the if-else block. Drag it into the instruction box, and it will ask you for a condition. Just put true as a default for the moment. At this point, you have to think what the condition will be that will trigger the man to say hello. In this case, when she is close to him. Let's say when she is two meters away. How do you test to see if she's two meters away? Well, remember in the world's functions, we had all of those a is equal to b or a is greater than b things? Now is the time to use one. So grab the a is less than b function and drag it into where you put true. Again, just put the default numbers for the moment. We will replace a and b, which are just placeholders with what we want. So we need to check if the distance of the man to the girl is less than 2 meters. So we just put that function in the spot where the first number 1 is. It will check the distance for you every time, like a function should. Then just put 2 where the number 1 is. If you now read the statement, it should make sense. If aboriginal man distance to aboriginal girl is less than 2. We will put what we want to happen in the spot where it says do nothing under that statement. So let's put a couple of instructions in here. Now what do we want to happen in the else? Nothing. So let's just leave that blank, which is perfectly fine. If we press play, well, nothing happens. We need to make her move closer to the man. So let's make her walk 20 meters so that she walks past him. Well, she walked within 2 meters, but still nothing happened. That's because before the if-else happens, we do our check. The previous instruction has to complete fully, by which point she is way past him. So we will have to make her move a bit, then check, move a little bit more, and then check, and so forth. So let's make her move 1 meter and put the code in a while loop. Set it to true. What does that mean? Well, it means just go forever. While true, we'll just keep checking and going on and on and on. You could also put a condition such as A equals B instead of true if you wanted to check something, but we'll just keep it simple for the moment. Let's see what happens. It works perfect. Okay, let's do another slightly more complex one. In this example, we're going to get a man to jump into his canoe. If he jumps far enough, he makes it. Else, he lands in the water. Look at that. I think I just said our if-else statement right there. The tricky part is going to be how to check if he makes it or not. We are also going to have to set him up to jump a random distance each time. So let's make a very simple method for jumping. Create a jump method for the man, and we need to give that method a distance to jump so it needs a parameter. It will have three simple instructions in it. The distance he jumps will be whatever we receive from the parameter. Remember, the parameter is just a box that contains something, and it will put that something into your method where the names match. So drag the parameter into the move toward instruction. 
Okay, the method has a parameter, so we need to give it something. Let's make a variable to have somewhere to put our random distance jumped. This is what we're going to give the jump method. We want it to be a random distance, and Alice has a random number generator that we can use in the world functions. Drag it into our variable's value, and let's see what happens when we run it. You'll notice the man is jumping the same distance each time. This is because, by default, Alice will pick a number between 0 and 1. So we need to set a minimum and maximum value for our random number. Let's give it a minimum of 1 and a maximum of the distance from the man to the canoe. Let's see how that works. That's better. Now our variable has a random value somewhere between 1 and the distance to the canoe. Okay, so now we have to check if he has landed in the boat or not. Drag in an if-else box, and let's think about how we will do the checking. There are a number of ways to do this, but we will use an if something is greater than check. So drag one in. The boat is about 0 0.8 meters wide, so we will say that if he is within 0 0.3 meters of the center, he lands in the boat. So put 0 0.3 after the greater than sign. In that case, we need to find out how far from the boat's center he lands. To do that, we should subtract the distance he jumped variable from the distance to the boat. So if it is 1 meter to the boat and he randomly jumps 0.2 meters, the results will be 0.8. That is greater than 0.3 so he will not make the boat and he'll get wet. So let's drag in the man say method into the if else block and we'll make him say, I didn't quite make it. If he randomly jumps 0.9 meters, then he has 0.1 meter from the boat and he makes it. So for that, we want to drag in the man say method but this time we'll make him say, phew, I made it. Let's try it and see what happens. Hmm. He says I made it each time. Well, let's see what happens. These are some of the problems that you may run into while doing this kind of coding. First, you need to check your logic. Does the greater than make sense? Try and write out some examples on paper to check if it's correct. I will tell you, however, that it is correct. So pause the video if you want to try and figure out this problem. Well, what are you checking? The distance to the boat minus the distance jumped. And when are you checking it? After he has jumped. So that distance to the boat function is running off to check the distance again within the if-else statement. When the man is now much closer to the boat, we are subtracting the distance he jumped, say 0.8 meters from the new distance, which could now be 0.2 meters, giving us minus 0.6. This is never going to be greater than 0.3, so how do we fix this? We're going to need a new variable. This variable is a place to keep the original distance of the man to the boat. We measure it at the start, so that we have it in our pockets, ready to use when we need to do the calculations later. So we make a new variable called distance to canoe, and we put our measurement in there. Let's quickly walk through our code line by line. First, we measure our original distance to the boat, and we put it in a variable to be used later. Then, we get a random distance and put that in a variable. We then give that random number to our jump method to be used in the move forward instruction within that method. Next is the if-else. 
we figure out if we were going to do the if or the else by doing some math to see how close to the boat he will land. If he's further than 0.3 meters, then he says, I didn't quite make it. Else, he says, phew, I made it. I know all that math stuff was really difficult to follow. I went through it pretty quickly. So let's take another look at what we're trying to accomplish here. We want to make sure we get our logic correct. If the man jumps and lands in the canoe, we want him to say, phew, I made it. And if he doesn't make it into the canoe, we're going to make him say, I didn't quite make it. The first thing we need to know is how wide the canoe is. The canoe is about 0.8 meters wide, and we need to know this so we can figure out roughly where the center of the canoe is. So if the man jumps and lands within 0.3 meters of the center of the canoe, then he made it. Let's take a look at his first jump. The distance from the man to the center of the canoe is 1 meter. And the man's first jump, he only makes it 0.2 meters. So we take the distance to the canoe minus the distance he jumped to get the distance from the center of the canoe. Here's the equation with the numbers filled in. We take the answer and see if it's greater than or less than 0.3. If it's greater than 0.3, he didn't make the jump. Now on his next jump, we're going to make him land in the canoe so we can look at how the equation would look. Again, the distance to the canoe is 1 meter. The man's jump is 0.9 meters. So we take 1 meter and minus 0.9 from it, which gives us 0.1, and 0.1 is less than 0.3, and therefore he made the jump. Again, here's the logic in Alice. I hope this has made things a little bit more clear for you guys. So let's run it and see if it works. There you go. Sometimes he makes it, and sometimes he doesn't, and he gives you the correct response each time. In the next lesson, we will show you how to use events, which will set you up to start making some simple games. Thanks for watching.